I'm still in Saskatchewan after visiting Regina for a few days so if you haven't watched that episode don't forget to do so but now we're back on the road again heading south to Grasslands National Park but before that we heard about another place called Big Muddy and it's supposed to be really beautiful and historic so we're gonna stop there first Just 12 miles away from the U.S. border lies Canada's Wild West, Saskatchewan's big muddy valley where its remote badlands proved an ideal hideout for famed bandits such as Sam Kelly, Dutch Henry, and the Sundance Kid in the late 1800s and early 1900s. An easy place for bank robbers and horse thieves to disappear with its wind-carved buttes and sandstone ravines. It's a beautiful place to see wide open spaces that never seem to fade while imagining horse stealing stories from the Wild West days, admiring indigenous stone effigies, and learning about the prosperity of small mining towns that are slowly fading away. We're here in Big Beaver at Ost's store, which opened up in 1959. And if they don't have it, you don't need it. Here we are in the heart of the Big Muddy Valley and nestled in the valley is Castle Butte. It's only about five minutes to the top and you'll be greeted with views like this. Well, we just arrived in the east block of Grasslands National Park right before sunset and we're going to be staying in an Otetnik for the first time. It's like a half house, half tent. Inside we have power, which is awesome, electricity, a table, and then a bunch of beds that sleeps up to six people. We're getting ready to go on our first hike here in Grasslands National Park. It's called Valley of 1000 Devils. Sounds pretty awesome. This is one of the most challenging trails in the park. It can be up to 10 degrees hotter than anywhere else there. But we're looking forward to it. So let's just hope we don't find any rattlesnakes. There's no rattlesnakes here. There is. You're more than welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not sure where we are right now. We were actually on the wrong trail going to Red Butte, but luckily we ran into Parks Canada, so they offered to give us a ride to a place that would get us there quicker than if we went back. We're not sure if we found the trail, but we found the Valley of the Thousand Devils. the temperature, Carla, here in Saskatchewan in mid-September? 30, 32, and it's so hot. Another cool thing to do here in the East Block is the Badlands Parkway. So this is an 11 kilometer paved road that takes you to a variety of viewpoints of the Badlands. So there's like just small hikes along the way to get to the red chairs or to the viewpoint, but it's pretty easy and accessible for everyone. We already did a long hike, so now we're gonna enjoy the views this way. Well, we're at the last viewpoint here on the Badlands Parkway Drive in the iconic Parks Canada Red Chairs overlooking the magnificent Badlands and it really is beautiful, especially at sunset. And it's a great way to spend our last night because tomorrow we head to the West Block. We're here at the Visitor Center for the West Block of Grasslands National Park in Val Marie. Just picked up all our maps for the hikes we're gonna do, the key for our authentic. But before we go there, because it's still a 40 minute drive, we're gonna actually take a shower because that's something you can do here in town and go to the grocery store to pick up food supplies we still need. So let's get going. Before heading to the campsite, we decided to do a small hike. So here is where the Eagle Butte and the 70 Mile Butte Trail starts. But we're gonna do the 70 Mile. It's one of the best hikes in the West Lock 
as it's kind of a short hike, it's up to two hours, and you can get amazing views of the Frenchman River Valley. We made it to the top, and this was such an easy hike. What a difference it makes when the temperature is a little bit cooler. It's even raining right now. So yeah, it's here and the views are amazing. What's your favorite view so far, Matthew? My favorite view. It's always tough because I love all these views, but I think I'm going to go with the Badlands and the East Block. I don't know why, just they look much more dramatic, but this is pretty good too. Well, we just passed a headless rabbit for some reason. I don't know of any animals that just take the head, but... Grasslands National Park is the only national park in Canada that represents the Prairie Grasslands Natural Region, of which over 70% has disappeared from North America as they are attractive to development and settlement. We love hiking the different trails, enjoying the different views and vastness of this serene land. But this mixed grass prairie ecosystem is more than just grass. It is home to a wide variety of plants and animals, including some that are found nowhere else in Canada. A reminder of a thriving land for the First Nations, who left behind over 12,000 tipi rings and pre-contact resources. Gonna fuel up and probably go do the eco tour, which is a, a driving tour. It's one to three hours, depending how much you stop, and another great way to see the park and prairie dogs. This is the Larson Dogtown Colony. You can see there's prairie dogs all around us and they live in different colonies. They actually are social animals so they like to live together and create their own dog towns. But we're actually starting at number seven instead of number one because it's the closest to our campsite so we're doing it in reverse. But normally you can start at number one and work your way down the eco trail but it doesn't really matter. Look there's two. Oh they're kissing! Oh my god! God, this is the cutest thing ever! This is the home of Walt Larson. He was the one who, who used to be a rancher here who owned this land and which eventually led to its creation as Grasslands National Park. And one of the homes over here was also home to the legendary Will James, which is a well-known author and illustrator of books on the Western style of life. One of the amazing things about this park is thinking back to the history of it when the First Nations were here and the bison roaming around. And part of that history is right here. This is a teepee ring. There's thousands of them in the park and you'll find them on a variety of hikes. So whether you explore this unique park by hiking or driving, you may come to understand and appreciate the significance of this rare and protected area. and the previous nights have been cloudy and it's been raining so we're really hoping that tonight we can get very good shots of the stars because Grasslands National Park has one of the darkest dark skies preserves. Yeah so a dark sky preserve is basically a place with no light pollution. There's a whole bunch of them in Canada and from what we've heard Grasslands is number one. Unfortunately our visit to Grasslands National Park has come to an end but we're so happy that we came and explored these beautiful landscapes, unique wildlife and plants and the beauty of the dark skies because you see tons and tons of stars and staying here at the Authentics is a great option, it's super comfortable. Yeah, it is very comfortable and all of southern Saskatchewan is such a beautiful place to explore from the Badlands in the East Block to the Prairies in the West Block and all the history of this province is really incredible. So we hope we inspired you to take your own road trip to Saskatchewan and if you like this episode, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, leave a comment, and visit our website at mustdocanada.com.